Hey, first off, I wanted to thank somebody for backing me on Patreon for $10. I still will need to do the fundraiser because I'm <laughs> going to be really strapped for cash this month, uh, especially after buying the phone, and I do still need to fund the, uh, the PS Plus subscription. Either that or the PC version, whichever one is easier. I'm not sure which one is easier at this point. And Fight and Rage. Uh, I submitted a request on Keymailer. I don't know if the developer actually works with Keymailer or not. As far as I know, this is his first Steam release, so I'm not really sure uh, what's going to happen with that, but I'm planning on buying it anyway, so uh, probably on the weekend, I'll need to put some time into planning uh, when I'm going to do it, when I'm going to what I'm going to play, and stuff like that. Uh, I'll try to raise some extra money to get all that stuff taken care of and have a little extra, so <laughs> this month's not going to be so hard to survive. What I wanted to talk about today is something I'm sure you've noticed I've been avoiding. <laughs> I had been avoiding it, uh, kind of like when political stuff happens, like you notice uh, most people who are smart don't talk about that stuff because it just brings out the worst in people. Uh, that's been happening a lot with Dynasty Warriors 9. Now I honestly, uh, to be completely honest with you, when they announced that it was open world, I already lost a lot of interest, but uh, now we're seeing that they're doing the, uh, the renders for the character reveals, and a lot of the characters seem to have clone weapons. We don't know if they're going to have some kind of thing like they've done in the past where some characters have the same weapons but they have different attacks like Dynasty Warrior 7 or if they're just going to be straight clones or something else like that. But it's gotten under a lot of people's skin. <laughs> I'm not really sure uh, what they're going to do about it at this point. Uh, looks like I have to redo my team here. I still don't have anybody cool. Oh, he can't join. No, I'll put what's your name in there, I guess. Yeah, I'll try him, he's pretty cool. So I think I'm on the right path for the uh, true ending here, hopefully. So, in my personal opinion, the problem with Dynasty Warriors 9 is that they are trying to change the formula too much in the same game, and it's obviously way too ambitious for what they're able to handle. I feel like if they had done something like have the uh, open world in this game and then try to declone everybody in the next game or change the battle system in the next game would have worked better but what they've done instead is they put all these major changes in the same game and it doesn't seem like they could really support both of them. That's just been my observation. It's, I know that they want to change the formula. It feels like it's, uh, it's too much for just a single title. Remember back when Dynasty Warriors 6 came out, it's what a lot of people are comparing Dynasty Warriors 9 to now, with uh, all the word coming out that characters are sharing weapons again. Like, that game was pretty much the same thing. Uh, they tried to revamp the, the combat system and, you know, deal with the struggles of HD development in the same game, and obviously if you were around in that time, you can remember uh, how much disappointment people had. I've said this before, and I know it's going to be controversial, but I've always felt like they should have uh, maybe just cut the characters and made Dynasty Warriors 9 into like a service game, kind of like uh, you know what they're doing with Grand Theft Auto. They have that whole online feature for it or whatever. But the problem is the community in general just. Uh, 
doesn't seem to like when characters get cut at all, even if it would actually do good. Basara, uh, that's probably the, the best game I've ever seen that's actually covered or dealt with the concept of cutting like half the cast. <laughs> it's done it way better than anything else, and it didn't take them too long to add everyone back in. I think it was only like maybe four years or so. But they're under so much pressure to make, uh, you know, a game that has everyone playable. Even though it's not something that they're obviously able to do. You know, people say these games are repetitive and they're brain dead and they don't take any effort to make, but I think people... <laughs> vastly underestimate, like, uh, you know, how much development time and resources has to go into making these. Like, Dynasty Warriors 9 is gonna have, like, close to 100 characters, most of which still seem to have their unique weapon and moveset. You know, they have to design that combo, uh, the combat system, you know, they have to completely redesign it for all those characters. You know, the game has to have lots of enemies on screen, they're going for the open world, which, like I said, I kind of disagree with doing that in the same game as trying to uh, you know, revitalize everything else. They have to do all that in a single game and it's obviously it's, it's just been too much for them to handle. I think even a bigger studio than uh, KTE would have to struggle with something like that. That's why I've always appreciated the Basara game so much. I think that those guys do miracles with uh, such a small team. They obviously don't really have a lot of uh, money or resources to do much with those games, but they've gone above and beyond for so long now. I remember all the disappointment on Koei Warriors when Dynasty Warriors 7 came out and or 6 came out and everyone was uh Finding out about the clones, you know, that game was very light on content. I think it only had like a dozen or so story modes that you could go through. Everyone else was either cut or a, a clone or both. <laughs> it was not a good time for the community at all. Yeah, I see uh, a lot of that stuff is happening again with this new game. Feels like I've gone back in time like 10 years and <laughs> like nothing's changed. This obviously is not true because Uso games have gone through so many advancements just in the past few years alone, let alone the decade it's been since DW6 came out. But feels like the new game is regressing a little bit. I've been asked a lot if I'll play it, uh, kind of like cautiously optimistic about the game. I don't want to make any promises or anything. I'm not really big on open world games at all. I, I pretty much openly despise them at this point, so I don't really want to say that I'm going to play it and then, you know, watch some gameplay or hear some bad impressions and then, you know, let people down. I am paying attention to it, but it just seems like everything they've shown so far is kind of like not really inspired me to you know, go out and save up 60 bucks for it. However, I do think that the PC version is going to be a, a good thing for the game. There will most likely be some nice mods that people will make with Cheat Engine or 
I don't know, maybe some other tool, depending on how easy it is to do that. I think that that will help quite a bit. I'm sure there's going to be stuff like maybe Super Sprint or something like uh, Berseria, where probably won't have to use the horse anymore. You know, some people seem to really like horse combat, but I've never really cared for it. I've always felt like it disrupts the flow of the game. Now, from what I've heard, I don't haven't really seen too many sources on this, but there's supposed to be some kind of mission mode, kind of like how they handled it in Tokiden 2, the open world in that, where there's going to be, uh, you know, you can just go through straight maps or something. I think that would be pretty cool. That's probably the majority of what I would play. You know, sometimes people get, uh, you know, they complain too much about games. It's a common thing. I mean, I'm no angel in that regard either. <laughs> I do it quite a bit, but I think with Dynasty Warriors 9, I think the people are, are not realizing that, uh, you know, they're doing too much for one game, and I think that the game is going to suffer in one aspect or another. We already know that there's there seem to be clones in the game, at the very least, uh, some characters are sharing weapons. So whether the rest of the game is going to sacrifice or you know, going to suffer because of that is, uh, it's up to interpretation, I guess. They haven't really shown too much gameplay. I don't think they've shown any gameplay of the uh, so-called cloned characters yet. Oh, I actually got some pretty good cards. Anna-san! Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop there. I just wanted to give my thoughts on the game. I've been getting asked uh, an increasing amount uh, every time I upload anything related to Musou. And I've been avoiding it for close to a year now. I'm sure you've noticed I haven't really said too much about it. I didn't want to seem... Uh, overly negative. I think that's a really big problem in the gaming community right now, especially with people who do videos like I do, you know, especially ones who have a, a decent sized following like me. Like, there's just, there's too much negativity, and uh, we still don't know a lot about the game, but right now, I have to admit, I, I'm really not too interested in it. I think the game is going to disappoint a lot of people. I think people will have to keep their expectations in check, because the development team seems to be uh, their hands are tied with all the stuff they're trying to do with the same game. It honestly feels like they should be doing these changes within two or maybe even three games. <laughs> like With Musou games, uh, you know, people want improvements all the time. But sometimes it is better for them to come in increments instead of just one big installment. Basara 3 is probably the only uh, instance I can think of where the game was improved in pretty much every way. The only real sacrifice was that the, the roster was cut. but. Uh, Utage came out uh, barely a year later, and that added almost everyone back. And then Basara 4 was about three years later, and that added pretty much everyone back, aside from a couple characters who are still missing. But with Koei games, it seems like they are... Uh, uh, it's probably like the higher-ups. Maybe they're like pressuring them to change it because they're getting so many complaints about it being a button masher, even though like the past few games, especially the franchise Musou games, have already changed up the combat quite a bit and they've made it more diverse, uh, more in-depth, it takes more skill, but, you know, the reviewers don't see that, you know, there's all this stuff going on about game journalists being terrible at games and how we shouldn't trust their opinions, at least on games like this, <laughs> but, you know, the development team probably doesn't make all the decisions. I'm sure that uh, for their workload and their stress levels, they probably would like to have the open world and stuff in the next game instead of this one, but uh, it's obviously too late for that now, so 
I'm interested to see what happens. I'm not going to commit to saying that I'm going to play it. I'll definitely check it out. Uh, I probably will get it on PC. I have my feelings that I, I would probably need to upgrade my PC to play it. Uh, even playing this at 1080p is kind of a, a challenge right now. I don't know if that's just the port or my PC or both, but I'm running it at 720p and it, it's pretty solid right now, aside from some, some minor frame rate hitches. So I don't know if this that's the kind of game I'd want to upgrade it for. I have a really high uh, feeling that I would probably get really frustrated with it because I don't really like open world games to begin with. We'll see what happens. I'll keep you guys posted, but uh, those are my thoughts about it. I'm not going to be talking about it too much more. Uh, I don't want to come off as overly negative. I think it is cool that they are vastly changing the combat system. I just feel like it shouldn't be in the same game that they're trying to do this big, bustling open world. I think that cutting characters or doing some kind of service model where they add everyone back in and they're able to make them all unique with their original weapons, I think that would have been a better idea. It would have been the lesser of two evils instead of what they're doing now where they're revealing everybody and you don't even know if they're going to have a, a clone moveset <laughs> or a weapon or not. I don't know if they're really doing it in the best way they should be, but that's my thoughts. I will uh, probably have more footage of this as I work towards the true ending. Catch you guys later. Peace.